Welcome to Real Analysis. This is Math 131 at Harvey Mudd College. Uh, Real Analysis is uh, an exciting subject. Uh, it is uh, one of the first courses that a, a math major takes, and there's a good reason for it. Uh, analysis, as I, I hope to show you, it involves more than just learning uh, something about mathematics. It's, it's also something about the process of doing mathematics. Okay, so in this course, uh, we're going to be thinking a lot about real numbers, as the name implies, but we will be also talking a lot about um, the process of thinking uh, of how to, to, to communicate mathematics well, write proofs well, uh, and a host of other issues uh, related to communication of mathematics. So um, let's begin. What is real analysis? What is real analysis? Let me start with a quote from Kronecker. <laughs> Some of you may recognize the name. Kronecker uh, was a, a mathematician who was responsible for the Kronecker Delta, which some of you might have encountered in physics, uh, is a notation. Kronecker said in 1886, God created the integers. All else is the work of man. What did he mean by that? Some thoughts. What did he mean by that? Feel free to... Give me your speculation. Yes? Um, the integers are really easy to grasp anyway. I mean, like, it just seems you had everything in your brain, so it tries to get rid of the easy sort of thing. Okay, the integers are, are easy to grasp. R tell me your name. I'm Dylan. Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Mary? Um, well, even animals can understand small integers. Like birds can tell the difference between two and three, but they don't have a grasp of other mathematics or the things that are Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, Mary's response was that even uh, animals can can do integers, but maybe there's something uh, uh, more that that we as humans can grasp. Katie. Integers occur in the natural world. Uh, calculus doesn't just occur in the natural world. What do you mean by that? Because some might, might say that it, it does. It, it, I, mean, the, I mean, calculus describes the natural world, but you don't see an integral just lying around there. Okay. <laughs> you don't just see an integral lying around. <laughs> Interesting. Other thoughts? What, what do you think Kronecker could have meant? God created integers all else. All else is the work of man. Yes? Integers are the basis for a lot of math, but things like the rational numbers are constructed by people through combinations of integers, stuff like that. You can build a lot of math using just the integers. Okay, so mathematics is built up from the integers uh, through some construction process, and we're in fact going to uh, begin to talk about what that means in a second. Other thoughts as to what Kronecker could have meant? Any other thoughts? All else is the work of man. Do you think he was being somehow... Um, Oh, I don't know, uh, somehow derogatory of, uh, of, uh, of what man can do? What do you think? Yes, Paul? You mentioned you showed up in physics. He might have been alluding to the fact that things are a little more discreet. Um, although I don't know if he knew that at the time. Okay. Um, but uh, that nature is more discreet than that continuous mathematics are nice and all, but don't explicitly show up in nature. Okay, so Paul is, is suggesting that perhaps Kronecker was happier with discrete things than continuous things, which one might argue don't, don't really show up in nature. Interesting. Okay, well, let me tell you a little bit about the, the genesis of this statement. So Kronecker had a very unusual point of view, uh, mathematics, at least it was unusual at the time, and it is in fact unusual today, and that is, um, oh, these are the questions that I was going to ask. <laughs> Do you agree or disagree? Um, Kronecker had an unusual point of view. Uh, he was uh, what you might call a finitist. Okay, so this is a point of view that mathematics should only deal with finite objects, finite numbers, or things that could be constructed from the numbers in a finite number of steps. Okay, so um, in, in some sense here, when you hear what he's saying, somehow the integers are special. 
they're, they're God-given in some sense, right? And everything else, well, it's just, it's just uh, the work of man. And so uh, the consequence of this belief is that, for instance, Kronecker was opposed to the use of irrational numbers and doubted the significance of non-constructive existence proofs, okay? And so some things that we take for granted today, which would include um, the length square root of 2, is something, the existence of the, the, the use of the uh, square root of 2 um, uh, would be something that Kronecker would have a real problem with, okay? And uh, this particular quote was in fact a response to Lindemann's proof, recent proof, it was 1882 that he proved that pi was transcendental, which in fact means that uh, it's not the root of an algebraic, uh, uh, the root of a polynomial with uh, integer coefficients. And uh, his response, Kronecker's response was, yeah, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful proof, but it's of no importance because, as we all know, transcendental numbers don't exist. <laughs> and, in fact, uh, Kronecker's point of view met with a lot of resistance because people felt slighted often by his, uh, his comments, um, which to them seemed like he was dismissing a whole areas of inquiry, which he shouldn't be dismissing. So uh, the, uh, I think the message that I want to begin with, begin this course with, is that there's a lot of things that we take for granted that weren't always so obvious. I mean, you might come to a course like Real Analysis, which some of you know, uh, we do a lot of things. We derive calculus from its foundations in some sense. And you, you might approach this course with uh, a, a, a point of view where you, you say, gosh, you know, isn't everything we do in this course kind of obvious? Well, it's, it's not, and I, I hope to, to convince you that there are a lot of things which to us appear obvious because we, we learn things a certain way. So um, if you think back to the Greeks, you know, they understood something about uh, rational lengths. I mean, they were interested in constructible lengths, constructible numbers, okay? They, they were interested in what you could get by using a ruler, a straight edge, and a compass uh, alone, okay? And so they knew how to construct rational lengths. You know, if you ask for a, a, uh, uh, a line of length four-fifths, they could show you how to do that, given a line of length one. Uh, they also knew there were other lengths on the line that were, not, uh, that were constructible, but not rational. Okay? And so this, of course, involves, uh, you, could, you, know, you can show that the square root of two is not uh, a rational number, which we will do in this course. Uh, but uh, it's, it is constructible, because after all, you can, if you've done anything with a straight edge and compass, how many people have worked with a straight edge and compass at some point? In, okay, yeah, you can construct two lines that are orthogonal, that are perpendicular, and, uh, and you know, measure off a length here and a length here, and then this one is the square root of two times that length. It's a constructible number. The Greeks knew about other lengths, like pi, but they couldn't find a construction that would give a, a, a line of length pi, okay? And so there's a big question uh, was whether you could uh, construct the length pi using straight edge and compass. So uh, it, it turns out that uh, turns out that you can't uh, construct pi, uh, and that's because it's transcendental and transcend. Uh, uh, constructible numbers are always algebraic and therefore not transcendental. So we know that it's not possible now. Uh, but pi can be, a, 